hi and welcome back with another tutorial in this video i'll be showing you how i am making my character and doing the uvs of my character so as you can see i'm preparing my character for the bake and i'm changing adding a suffix of uh, low on every mesh so that when i import this model into marmoset it will create uh, it will automatically create the baking groups uh, so that it won't bake one mesh on top of other that's why I like Marmoset uh, baking too much it is the industry standard tool for baking uh, for the game models so uh, I am doing currently doing the UVs of my character so for UVs it's, it's basically peeling off uh, the skin of character and laying it uh, flat on the ground for example uh, if you have an orange and I want to in real life orange you uh, do it you peel the skin and if you lay it flat it's the same concept on doing the uvs so for uvs i am doing the same thing uh, i'm adding uh, cuts on the different uh, uv shells and i am just unfolding them out and also i'm setting the texel density because uh, i want the texture to have the same uh, density across the meshes for example if a shell has a more texture density for example, if face uh, shells of face have more texture density than the body, then the skin texture. If I apply it in Substance Painter, there will be more, uh, there will be fine noise on the face, while there will be bigger chunks on the body, and that will cause problems. It will look uneven. That's why I'm setting the texture density from the UV toolkit. And for every other mesh, I'm uh, doing the same. I'm just cutting some edges uh, where I think that there will be stretching, and then just unfolding it out. For single surface, for single-sided faces, I'm just doing the unfold. For the core part, uh, I'm deleting all the other meshes right now uh, because uh, I will be baking all the details onto this mesh. And right now, I'm just cutting it from the. Uh, sleeves from the underneath paneling uh, it's uh, like how a tailors use uh, different parts of the clothes i'm doing the same thing i'm adding just cuts on those meshes also for uh, symmetrical pieces uh, for example the shoulder pads and the arms i'm deleting the other side of the model uh, and i will be just doing the uvs of these meshes and then will be mirroring them over to the other side so that i am able to save the texture space that's why i'm removing one side of the mo uh, model and just duplicating it over for hard surface meshes it is uh, uh, a bit difficult to use because uh, for every corner you have to select edges and uh, add a cut there because in corners it will uh, the UVs will compress or there will be some kind of stretching on uh, on the texture so that's what i'm doing right now so for the belt uh, right now you can see that i brought these meshes uh, from zbrush so they, uh, their normals are a bit weird so i'm tweaking the edges and uh, sliding the edges on the corner so that when i smooth it out it stays sharp and crisp so i'm doing the same thing i'm making sure that i don't have to re the character again because i'm tweaking my meshes accordingly and adding edge loops where necessary and removing the additional edge loops uh, where uh, the mesh, mesh is dense and not low poly as you can see the curvature wasn't good here in the low poly because it will bake weird so i added edge loop and added uh, did edit edge flow on these meshes and it smoothed out the curvature right now i'm just cutting the edges and unfolding it out and making sure it's uh, uh, nice and uh, smooth the edges unfold nicely and making sure the texel density is correct by setting uh, texel density to 4 for 512 uh, 512 map size and now i'm just removing some additional meshes because uh, some where the mesh is dense uh, since I will be baking all of the details in the low poly so I don't need those uh, additional edges and I am removing those up and cleaning the meshes and for some pieces I do a edit edge flow because the, wherever the edges are jagged I will be doing that for the buttons I'm just doing the unfold for this piece shoulder piece I did the unfold for this rope piece there was a lot of edges so what i'm doing is i'm selecting every second edge and doing a continuous edge loop selection and then deleting those edges uh, i'm using my opponent's tools uh, for selecting every nth edge because uh, uh, selecting every nth edge is not a uh, built-in tool in maya it comes with the bonus tools 
so i'm using that and i am just uh, unfolding the uvs and setting the text density for uh, most of uh, the uvs shells i am using 10 text density for a uh, 512 map for face i just double the text density which is uh, 20 text uh, 20 text density for a 512 map and for eyes i made it uh, four times for example for eyes i make it 40 text density for uh, for the texture so that when i lay out everything out uh, the texture density is uniform across all the meshes apart from the face and eyes because uh, a lot of details is added onto the face and other parts of the uh, meshes so uh, uvs are pretty easy sometimes people conf confuse it you know, like it's uh, uh, very difficult for the hands i'm adding uh, these cuts and making sure that the front panel is separate and the back panel is separate so that when i unfold is there is no stretching going on here so for the hard surface object it's the same i'm just cutting uh, objects and uh, on the corners especially because i know that there, that's where the stretches uh, stretching is going to happen uh, i also uh, think of how uh, the baking will turn out uh, because uh, uh, i'm adding swix on it after that i will import the high poly uh, meshes here in maya and add a high underscore high swix on each and every mesh i'm using uh, uh, modify search and replace name and add a dollar sign uh, in the search and uh, add underscore high in the in the replace tab so that when i replace the names it will turn out okay uh, it will replace uh, the whole name and add uh, underscore high at the end of it so because uh, i uh, use uh, uh, marmoset speaker and it will create groups automatically according to it so now that i have done the uvs of each and every uh, piece of my model uh, I will I am importing the high poly models right now as you can see because the mesh is very dense it, it, it's taking some time uh, while loading all the meshes yeah I should have probably sped up the video but now that I have rendered it out I can't do that so I, I'm checking that high poly is correct. I'm selecting all the mesh pieces and going to my modify, search and replace name, add a dollar and add a underscore high and replacing all the names. And you can see that in my outliner tab, uh, every mesh with uh, that high poly uh, material, uh, that high poly meshes have is ending with an underscore high tab. I'm grouping them and applying a high matte material so that when i import the models into a uh, marmo set it doesn't have uh, additional material added on top of it now i'm uh, separating my meshes on the basis of how i'm going to texture them so i'm grouping them up like coat matte group i will apply one 4k material on top of it for the gauntlet shoes i go it, uh, going to apply a 2k material on top of it so that's why i'm grouping based on the materials for body and uh, uh, these three other meshes i'm going to apply a 4k matte on top of it now uh, since i have already done the uvs i'm going to pack them into a uv uh, uh, layout so i'm just laying out all the uvs and packing them up so that uh, the uh, texture applies smoothly on top of it so i'm selecting each and every group and applying a material on top of it so that when i uh, import uh, in it in marmoset there will be three materials and i will uh, it will bake uh, bake texture according to the number of materials that i have so now that all the meshes have been packed and they all have the same texture density now i'm mirroring all the parts so that uh, they are using the same uvs as uh, the left side i'm also mirroring the eyes now that the mesh has been prepared for the bake i will be putting it into marmoset toolbar and yeah uh, it was a bigger file so it takes a lot of time to reload all the meshes in marmoset toolbar so i'm using the baker uh, load button or for loading all of the meshes i could have baked all these uh, the whole character uh, together uh, but uh, because uh, marmoset uh, vram gets filled up quickly 
so uh, it wasn't uh, baking all three meshes together it there were uh, it was showing some artifacts uh, well uh, it is a problem with marmoset because when you import too much uh, high poly meshes uh, or more than enough polygons then your gpu supports uh, it won't show an uh, uh, an error instead there would be some weird artifacts or some parts won't be baking on the meshes so that's what i'm doing and right now i'm checking that if there are any artifacts i should clear those up out so i'm doing the same thing i'm just uh, adding uh, the offset paint offset uh, for the code i will be painting offset because uh, the mesh is uh, uneven and the distance is way too much uh, so uh, if you remember in the first video i was painting some colors in the zebra so i exported those color with the uh, uh, vertex color so so when i so i will be baking those vertex color here and i will use that as an id map in substance painter so here is that vertex color so i uh, painted colors in zbrush and i will be using them as a id map in substance painter i'm putting some lights and checking out how it reflects because if you bake an 8-bit normal map the reflections would be blurry and weird so that's why i bake a 16 uh, uh, bits normal uh, when baking the final output i'm checking whether all the fine details of the face is uh, baked as well or not so this uh, lighting setup is just in test, it's won't, it won't be uh, used in the final render. So I'm checking on each and every mesh and how it works out. Uh, I'm also checking how the height map is reacting. I'm adding tessellation on the face and uh, checking whether uh, it's baking all the details on the face or not and uh, how it, whether it becomes uh, the same quality as the sculpt that I did in ZBrush. So I'm checking and making sure that it works. I'm also adding subdivisions levels on my uh, all of my meshes and you can see that I am uh, just uh, increasing the intensity of how uh, further the height is going to be pushed out or pushed inwards you can see that as soon as I add tessellation on it it becomes very smooth and clear and all the meshes are clear and it looks like uh, uh, like the same quality as the sculpt I did so, so height map is very important because uh, for a personal project if I'm rendering it I want to render it as high quality. So right now I'm checking all the maps that I need for the bakes. Most of uh, so the basic maps that Substance Printer needs are uh, normal, world space normal, curvature, ambient occlusion, thickness and curvature, height and position maps. For vertex color I use it uh, for a, an ID map for masking it out in substance painter because otherwise it will uh, uh, it makes my uh, masking very easy in substance painter i can easily make uh, uh, I, I can easily mask the portion out of from one material to another for the coat uh, uh, you know that there were some additional meshes on the coat and uh, i deleted those meshes out so because uh, it was uh, baking one part on top of either, each other so i'm tweaking the uh, tweaking the offset of a geometry offset and uh, making sure that it bakes all the necessary portion of the uh, coat from high poly to low poly uh, so that's very important for in substance printer if you bake some meshes there is only just one value when you're baking it out uh, so you can just set some distance and it will create some artifacts on one mesh and it will uh, and bake and not bake some part of mesh where the distance is more so uh, in marmoset that's uh, where we have an edge while baking so if some part of mesh is further and some part of mesh is closed we can just uh, paint an offset on to the cage and it will bake all the details as you can see right now i'm painting it uh, uh, painting the cage and all the details are getting visible uh, which weren't baked previously so this is very important thing and there is one more thing of one of that for example if i was uh, baking it in substance painter uh, substance would have a bake my shirt mesh uh, uh, big my coat mesh on top of my shirt mesh because they are very close uh, when they are uh, intersecting through e each other but in marmo said because they all lie in separate uh, mesh groups uh, uh, it doesn't take one mesh group on top of the other 
so uh, so uh, if you think that uh, if that uh, that is the case then ao won't be on top uh, baked on top of each other but we have a, a checkbox in the ao settings uh, that if we can whether we want to ignore groups or not so that's what i'm doing currently and uh, in substance painter uh, there would be a problem uh, on the lips and on the fingers it will bake uh, one finger on the other because they are very close to each other and it will also bake one lip on top of each other so either you have to take uh, each and every mesh uh, in the exploded form in substance painter and you also have to bake the maps with the open mouth and then you have to close in the mouth and apply texture on top of it so for in marmoset you don't have to do all these type of stuff for example uh, under the armpit there were some artifacts and i am just painting them out and cleaning all those artifacts right here in marmoset toolpack so that's why i prefer marmoset toolpack okay so the video is going to end right now Thanks for watching.